Picture this in your head for me. You just escaped spawn on the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft. You're going out into the wilderness, and after days of walking, you come across an active base. The people you find there seem friendly, but act very coy in conversation. Upon logging in the next day, you find that the very same base you found is gone. Not griefed, not disassembled, gone. As if nobody had ever been there before. All ores underground regenerated, and all plant life put back where it was originally found. Everything untouched. This is not something a normal player could do in a single night. Only someone with admin access could accomplish something like this so quickly. This is not a made up story or a Minecraft urban legend. This is something that actually happened to an unexpecting player on 2B2T with evidence. Whether you consider them lucky or unlucky will be your choice to make at the end of this video. This is the story of the 2B2T base that disappeared. Today I'll be discussing how the base was found, how it disappeared, why it disappeared, and where it went. But there is something that I need to do differently in this video today in order to keep the video monetized. If you are familiar with the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft, you probably know by now how toxic and politically incorrect it can be at times. So in order to stay within YouTube's community guidelines, I've had to modify some of the words that I'll be saying in the video today. Whenever I say Brad Pitt, I'm actually referring to the guy from Germany during World War II who was not very nice. Whenever I say pinwheel, I'm referring to the symbol that the guy from Germany used during World War II. Okay, are we clear? Let's get started. During the summer of 2016, the YouTube invasion of 2B2T happened, with thousands of new players joining the server in a matter of days. These players all branched out from 0-0, going out as far as they could in order to survive and gear up. All of this new exploration meant that previously undiscovered bases were being found. On August 8, 2016, a post was made on the 2B2T subreddit by user Grey Grey Sage, claiming that a base had been found. Not just anybody's base. Housemaster's base. If you didn't know, Housemaster is the mysterious admin of 2B2T who historically has been very hands-off with the Anarchy server, only communicating with the community when necessary and never revealing much about himself or his actual identity. There had always been rumors that Housemaster had actual bases on 2B2T in places nobody could find, and that he would occasionally play with his friends, but the general community never had proof of this. Even going years back, there were memes about Housemaster having actual bases. Housemaster, want to build a base together? Housemaster, House. But according to the post, a friend of Grey Grey Sage found the base several weeks prior while out exploring and sent the coordinates to him. He decided to check out the base for himself. When he arrived at the base, he saw it was littered with pinwheels and other unusual structures. Holes going down to bedrock, mining tunnels, farms, you name it. This was a very offensive base that seemed to celebrate the fact that 2B2T had no rules. The name of this base was Brad Pittville. The owner of the base was online and walking around. His account had the name George Bush 420. At the time, Sage had no idea who this was, but if you've seen my video on how 2B2T almost died, you know that this account belongs to Housemaster and has operator status. Whenever 2B2T is in the process of updating, this is usually one of the accounts that is seen online. Now some claim that George is actually a friend of Housemaster's who develops plugins, but the account itself belongs to Housemaster. Regardless of who was using the account at the time, 
Sage had just found an admin account actively playing on 2B2T. George was friendly to Sage, and the two talked for a while. He told Sage that he could take whatever he wanted from this base. George also mentioned that his friends, Noodle and Baj, were at the base as well, and that they would be told not to attack Sage. So Sage took a few items and logged off. The next day, the base was gone, and I mean gone. Not only were any of the structures there anymore, but all the terrain was repaired. The massive holes that went down to bedrock were once again filled with smooth stone and ores. The tunnels they used to mine no longer had torches, and all the diamonds and gold ore had been placed right back where they were. Now from here I'll be quoting Sage. He says, When I logged back in, I was greeted by Noodle, who was just coming out of another portal, who was quickly followed by Baj. I told them I met George and I was friendly. I also mentioned that I was just looking for the base to dig out more of George's diamond pinwheel. I mentioned the base should be right here, but they both were acting very coy, as if there was nothing wrong. They both quickly logged after our conversation. This was the last I heard of the three of them. Now from here, Sage posted some screenshots in order to prove what he had found. From here, he continues, and I quote, In the comparison screenshots, notice the similarities I have highlighted. The terrain is the same. The only thing that still remained when I got there was a small pinwheel etched in the earth with a shovel, which is also highlighted. That's not even there any longer. I've blocked out the first three digits of the cords out of respect for George. My friend saw my screenshots and couldn't believe it. She ventured out to check the place out and found the same thing. There is nothing there anymore. There is also some funky generation going on with the trees around the base. If you were to find the location now, you'd see nothing there. No trace of any building or exploring can be seen. I'm not sure why they left. Perhaps they didn't trust new people discovering their base. But why go through all the trouble of filling in all the holes, replacing ores, repairing the terrain, etc.? Why not just take all valuable material and leave? They had around 50 double chests of supplies. There's no way the three of them could have relocated this base in one day. So how on earth did they do this? It's as if they turned back time. The only thing I can think of that they used is world edit? But players don't have access to that, right? You know, those people who swear that they see aliens but no one will believe them? Well, I feel like I'm in a similar situation. End quote. That right there sums up Sage's post. He then posted screenshots to prove that he was indeed on 2B2T. So this begs the question, why would this base disappear? Well, if the post is to be believed, and all of this actually happened on the server, why would House or a friend of House remove a base entirely? Well, if you look at House's actions in the past, he tries his best to remain secretive and limit his impact on the server. If an admin had an active base, every single player on 2B2T would flock to it like crazy. It makes sense that House would remove the base, but the fact that it was quietly removed is very unusual. Most would assume the base was simply deleted, but an old friend of mine, who has asked to remain anonymous, claims that it wasn't straight up deleted. It was moved. He claims that sometime after the Reddit post was made and chatter about the base had died down, longtime 2B2T player and member of the group Tyranny, Clyde, streamed himself playing 2B2T on Tiny Chat and was walking around Brad Pittville. My anonymous source never took screenshots or video evidence of this, so of course I have to remain skeptical of this, but I don't think this is something he'd lie about. That means that this base could still be on the server somewhere. Where is it? The story behind Brad Pittville is just another unsolved mystery that makes 2B2T such an unusual server to study, and is part of what gives it such notoriety. 
Will we ever know the full story behind this base? Probably not. But maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's for the best. If you liked today's video and are interested in the history of the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft, make sure to subscribe for more 2B2T content. If you want to stay up to date on when 2B2T content gets posted, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, which are both in the description below. Also, make sure to check out the discussion tab on my channel to figure out when new videos are coming out and to see my streaming schedule. But that's it for today's video, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Will you be the person to find out the mystery behind Brad Pittville? Who knows, you just might be. Now stay alive out there, FitFam.